Happy World Anesthesia Day to everyone around the globe. I am Dr. Bala Venkat, Secretary World Federation of Society of Anesthesiologists. WFSA is the organization which networks between 150 member societies from 150 countries. And one of the important component of WFSA is to ensure the well-being of every anesthesiologist in this world. As we serve our surgical patients in decreasing their perioperative morbidity and mortality, it's also important that we look after the well-being of our own colleagues across the world. And we are happy that uh, this year, for the World Anesthesia Day, we have requested the mentors in the Isha Yoga Center, situated in Coimbatore in India, to give us and enrich us with adequate knowledge about yoga in our day-to-day -day life to make sure that we lead a life of absolute mental and physical and spiritual well-being. I have great pleasure in introducing Dr. Veena Singh, who will take us through this journey of 45 minutes of giving an insight into the essentials of yoga for professionals. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bala Venkat and WFSA. Happy to be here today to uh, share the tools of well-being designed by Sadhguru. Today, we bring you yogic practices, which will help you relax your neck and shoulder muscles, bring in a deep sense of peace within yourself, reduce stress, and also enhance your immune system and your lung capacity. What to expect in this session today? We will be going through the demonstration of various practices followed by guided practices. Towards the end of the session, we might have some time for Q&A. We will begin today's session by starting with a brief description of how to approach these practices by Sadhguru. The science of yoga not only has powerful tools for one's ultimate well-being, it also offers useful tools for one's immediate well-being, healing and relief. These tools can be termed as Upa Yoga. Upa Yoga is to understand the body's needs and operate according to that. See, your joints function the way they function. Most people don't know what this means, they're just using it. One day when it becomes stiff and painful, you know what a joint is. It's a tremendous thing, you know. It's, it's such a complex uh, system of arrangement. It is finest mechanics that you can think of. So all the joints, the complex functions they're able to perform and allow you to do so many things on a daily basis, they're made in a certain way. And one important part of that is that they are well lubricated. If you run an engine of any kind without lubrication, within minutes, it'll wear out. So it is well lubricated. How well lubricated it is will determine how long these joints will last. There are enormous amount of energy nodes in the body. You just do something like this. Just, just get that joint and with a little bit of pressure, just do this two times or three times like this. you'll see suddenly you're much more awake. Have you noticed this? You're naturally doing it, but not consciously doing it, unconsciously doing these things. If you move without lubricating your joints, how long your joints last will come down or a period of time, you will have these issues. So let's uh, get started with learning the practices. The first practice that we will learn is for the neck and shoulder region. The practice may look very simple. However, what is of utmost importance is to pay absolute attention to the instructions 
and do it with absolute precision along with awareness of the breath. We'll see the demonstration followed by doing the guided practice together. Now we will do a certain set of practices for the neck. This will help you to relax the stiffened muscles in the neck and shoulder region. We will look at the first three neck practices now. Please observe. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Keep your arms and shoulders loose and relaxed. Make sure your neck is loose like a rope, no stiffness of any sort. Eyes closed. As you exhale, slowly and gently lower your chin to your chest. This is the starting position. Now, as you inhale, gently bring your head up and take it back. As you exhale, bring your head down to your chest. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. Now we will see the second neck practice. As you inhale, slowly and gently turn your head to the right, to the extreme point that you can turn. As you exhale, bring it back to the center. Now, as you inhale, slowly and gently turn your head to the left, to the extreme point that you can turn. As you exhale, bring it back to the center. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. And now we will see the third neck practice. As you exhale, slowly and gently bring your right ear towards your right shoulder to the extreme point you can go. As you inhale, bring it up. As you exhale, slowly and gently bring your left ear towards your left shoulder to the extreme point you can go. As you inhale, bring it up. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. Now we will do three cycles of the first three neck practices together. Please stand. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Keep your arms and shoulders loose and relaxed. Eyes closed. As you exhale, slowly and gently lower your chin to your chest. This is the starting position. Now as you inhale, gently bring your head up and take it back. As you exhale, bring your head down to your chest. Second cycle. Again, as you inhale, bring your head up and back. As you exhale, bring it down. Third cycle. Ensure your shoulders are relaxed. No stiffness of any sort. Now for the second neck practice, come to the starting position. Your head should be straight, eyes closed. As you inhale, slowly and gently turn your head to the right. As you exhale, bring it back to the center. Now as you inhale, slowly and gently Turn your head to the left. As you exhale, bring it back to the center. Second cycle, right side. Left side.
third cycle. Do it slowly. You can even hold the stretch for a moment and then come back. Come back to the starting position. Now we will do the third neck practice. Again, your head is straight, eyes closed. As you exhale, slowly and gently bring your right ear towards your right shoulder. As you inhale, bring it up. As you exhale, Slowly and gently, bring your left ear towards your left shoulder. As you inhale, bring it back up. Second cycle. Third cycle. It is an exhalation as you lower the head. It is an inhalation as you bring it up. When you are finished, please sit comfortably. So I hope that was uh, relaxing after probably a long day. We shall go to the second set of neck and shoulder practices now. Now we will learn the fourth and fifth neck practices. Again, feet are comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Eyes closed. As you exhale, lower your chin to your chest. This is the starting position. As you inhale, Slowly and gently, rotate your head towards your right shoulder. As you inhale, your head goes back. As you exhale, it comes down again. Then switch and rotate in the opposite direction. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. And for the fifth and final neck practice, rotate your shoulders forward. As you inhale, go up. As you exhale, come down. Do this three times. Now rotate your shoulders backward. As you inhale, go up. As you exhale, come down. Do this three times. Now we will do the fourth and fifth neck practices together. Please stand. Check to see your feet are parallel to each other. Eyes closed. As you exhale, lower your chin to your chest. This is the starting position. As you inhale, slowly and gently rotate your head towards your right shoulder. As you inhale, your head goes back. As you exhale, it comes down again. Do a full rotation, then switch and rotate in the opposite direction. We will do two more cycles. Second cycle. Rotate towards the right shoulder. Ensure your upper body remains still as you rotate the head.
switch directions and rotate towards your left shoulder. Third cycle. Do it slowly with the breathing. And now we will do the fifth neck practice together. Your head is straight, upper body relaxed, eyes closed. Now rotate your shoulders forward. As you inhale, go up. As you exhale, come down. Do this three times. Now rotate your shoulders backward. As you inhale, go up. As you exhale, come down. Do this three times. When you are finished, please sit comfortably. Were you able to get all the practices? If you can't remember them, it's okay. We will be sharing the link with you. The link will be available to you on the WFSA uh, YouTube link, as well as you could reach out, uh, you could download Sadhguru app and you could find the practices there. So the next practice that we will learn now is a breathing practice called Nadi Shuddhi. It cleanses the Nadis. Nadi means the pathways along which the pranic energy or the life energy flows. Consistent and daily practice can bring a very deep state of relaxation and peace within yourself. We'll see the demonstration for Nadi Shuddhi. Please observe. Yoga for peace. Nadi Shuddhi. The word Nadi Shuddhi literally means cleansing the Nadis. When we say Nadis, we are not talking about the seventy-two thousand because these seventy-two thousand are only a branch out of the two basic Nadis, the Pingala and the Ida. Thirty-six thousand branching out from Pingala, thirty-six thousand branching out from Ida. This is the energy physiology of a human being. When we say Nadi Shuddhi, we are talking about cleansing fundamentally the Pingala and Ida so that energy system will work in balance. There is a connection between your breath and your mental structure. To bring balance to your thought is a very important step that you need to take if you want to bring balance to your activity, your emotion and the results of your life and the impact that you have on other people's lives. Nadi Shuddhi plays an important role. How to do Nadi Shuddhi? She will demonstrate. Please observe. Sit in a cross-legged posture, with your spine comfortably erect, eyes closed. Left hand should be loosely placed in the middle of your lap, palm facing upwards. Use only your right hand. Use your thumb and ring finger. Fold your middle and index fingers. The ring and little finger are held straight and side by side touching. Now block your right nostril with your thumb and inhale through your left nostril. After the inhalation is complete, exhale through the same. In a similar fashion, using the ring finger, block your left nostril and inhale through the right nostril. Then exhale through the same. Again, block the right and open the left. Inhale. 
and exhale. Continue like this. Be focused on your breath. So when you do this Nadi Shuddhi, what is most important is to breathe fully in and fully out, as slowly and as gently as it is possible for you. You should not make any sound when you exhale or inhale. So for this to happen, you just need to remember one basic point so that Nadi Shuddhi happens by itself. You will always switch after every exhalation. So that means whichever nostril you inhale through, the same nostril you exhale through. You do Nadi Shuddhi for a minimum of four minutes. A few corrections for the practice. Do not keep your left hand on the thigh. The left hand should be loosely placed in the middle of your lap. To clarify, on the right hand, you use only your thumb and ring finger. The ring and little finger are held straight and are side by side touching. Fold your middle and index fingers. If you are unable to hold them straight, do it as best you can. Also, there is a tendency to keep the head down or turn to one side. Unconsciously, your face may tilt one way or the other. Your head should be straight. If you maintain this, your system will come to a balance very quickly. Ensure not to press too hard on the lower part of the nostril. Locate the septal bone on your right nostril just a millimeter beneath that if you place the thumb. With very minimal pressure, you can block the nostril effectively so that no air can escape. Ensure you are not breathing shallow, doing normal breathing, or holding the breath. The breathing should be fully in and fully out. I hope the instructions are clear. I will repeat it once more. How you do Nadi Shuddhi? You sit in a cross-legged posture. For those of you who are able to sit comfortably on the floor in a cross-legged posture for four minutes, it's absolutely okay. You could do that. For those of you who are not able to sit on the floor, you could sit on a chair and cross your legs at the ankles, right ankle over the left ankle. This way you can sit comfortably. How you do the Nadi Shuddhi? Sitting in a cross-legged posture like this, you keep your left palm loosely placed in your lap, palm facing upwards. Using the right hand, you do the Nadi Shuddhi. You fold the middle and uh, index finger. Use only the thumb and the ring finger for doing the Nadi Shuddhi. The little finger is held straight close to the ring finger. You start by blocking the right nostril with the right thumb. Inhale to the left nostril. Exhale through the left nostril. After the exhalation is complete, block the left nostril with the ring finger. Open the right nostril. Inhale through the right nostril. Exhale through the right nostril. Block the right. Open the left. Inhale and then exhale. Like this, you continue. When you do the Nadi Shuddhi, remember the following points. You breathe fully in, you breathe fully out, you breathe as slowly, as gently as it is possible for you. You always remember that you switch nostrils only after exhalation. You do not switch after inhalation. Remember to keep your spine comfortably erect, head straight. We'll do the Nadi Shuddhi for four minutes now. Please sit comfortably in a cross leg posture and begin. Left palm loosely placed in your lap. Breathe fully in, fully out. As slowly, as gently as it is possible for you.
Keep your head straight. Spine comfortably erect. Be focused on your breath. Keep your eyes closed. Exhale through the left nostril and stop. Slowly open your eyes. The next practice that we will learn is called Timha Kriya. It's a very ancient yogic technique that enhances your lung capacity strengthens your immune system. Sadhguru offered the Simha Kriya during the difficult COVID times when uh, all of us were going through a variety of respiratory infections. And this practice can have a tremendous impact if you are going through any kind of infectious disease. We will see the demonstration. Please play the, do, during the demonstration, please do not attempt the practice. You simply listen to the instructions. We will do it together afterwards. What it involves is that you have to fully stretch your tongue out with your mouth fully open 
and then breathe as powerfully as possible without jerking the abdomen, but powerful pushing in and pushing out, both inhalation, exhalation, twenty-one times. And when it is done, you roll up your tongue upward, push it as further back as you can. You don't have to use your hands, this is not a good time to use your hands. So roll up your tongue fully as much as you can by itself, like… and still with your mouth open, again breathe the same way, inhalation, exhalation as powerfully as possible, but you must get the sound by making a constriction in your throat like this. The sound must be there, it's important that you make… form a constriction at the throat level… at the pit of your throat and make the sound an inhalation, exhalation, fully exhaling, fully inhaling, as powerfully as you can, but without jerking the abdomen, another twenty-one times with the tongue rolled up. Throughout the whole process, you have your eyes closed, you inhale fully, you inhale fully and simply sit there with the fullness of breath for one minute. If you are beyond a certain age or your breathing is not that good, at least thirty seconds. If you are not able to do one minute, a minimum of thirty seconds you stay there. When the day you are not able to do it, you must understand that there is some problem with your respiratory system and you must go for a checkup. Right now, she will demonstrate. So what's being done is uh, one has to sit in a cross-legged posture, whichever way you can, whatever your body permits, and then use both the arms to push it up in such a way that your rib cage lifts off the diaphragm region, fully pushed up, and now extend your tongue fully out. like this twenty-one times. When it's done, then close your mouth, that also twenty-one times, then close your mouth.
You exhale with your mouth closed, making the sound at the pit of your throat by creating a constriction. And then if you wish to sit quietly for some time with your eyes closed, do that. And then you can do whatever you're doing. This is a simple practice that anybody could do. You ensure your stomach is not too full, you must be somewhat hungry. Even if you're not totally empty stomach, at least you must be somewhat hungry kind of situation. Before we begin the Simha Kriya, if any of you have gone through any kind of minor surgery in the last six weeks, please do not attempt the practice now. You attempt the practice only after completion of the six weeks post-surgery. If any of you have gone through any major surgery in the last six months, please do not attempt the practice right now. You should do it after the six months are over post-surgery. Women during pregnancy and menstrual cycle can do the Simha Kriya. Anybody between the age of six years to 70 years of age can attempt the six, uh, Simha Kriya absolutely easily. We will, uh, how we will do the Simha Kriya now is, you sit in a cross-leg posture, whichever way it is comfortable for you. And then uh, sitting in a cross-leg posture, you bring your arms you push your arms on your knees in such a manner that your ribcage lifts off the diaphragm. Once you are in this position, extend your tongue out fully. Extend your tongue out fully and breathe powerfully, inhaling, inhaling and exhaling 21 times. After doing this 21 times, you roll your tongue up like this and you once again, breathe powerfully, inhale and exhale 21 times. If it is not possible for you to do this 21 times, you could do it minimum 12 times, but please do attempt 21 times. After doing both these uh, uh, parts of the practice 21 times each, you take a deep inhalation and you simply sit there in the fullness of the, of the breath for one minute. If not one minute, at least a minimum of 30 seconds, you must sit in the fullness of breath. I will repeat, first 21 times, you are breathing in and out with your tongue out like this. Next 21 times, you are breathing in and out with your tongue rolled up like this. After that, you take a deep inhalation, inhale fully and you hold your breath. Stay in the fullness of the breath for one minute or for a minimum of 30 seconds. Throughout this time, please keep your eyes closed. Your breathing must happen powerfully. We will do the practice right now. Please sit comfortably in a cross-leg posture, whichever way it is comfortable for you. Push your hands on your knees such that your ribcage lifts off the diaphragm. Extend your tongue fully out and breathe in and out powerfully 21 times. Keep your eyes closed. After you've done this 21 times, Roll your tongue as far back as you can in your mouth and breathe in and out powerfully 21 times. After you do this 21 times, take a deep inhalation, continue to keep your eyes closed and hold your breath. Stay in the fullness of the breath for one minute or for a minimum of 30 seconds. Once you're finished, please relax, slowly open your eyes.
So I hope the instructions are for Simha Kriya are clear. If it is not clear or you need to review it, you could uh, Google or you could go on the Sadhguru app and review the Simha Kriya once again. It will also be available to you on the WFSA site. We will now be going through a guided meditation with Sadhguru. Yoga for Inner Exploration Shambhavi Mudra In the history of humanity, many truly scintillating human beings have happened. They have shone brighter than the stars in the sky. But why is it that one seems to have come with enormous capability and why is it another has to struggle with every little aspect of life? If you consider yourself to be a mechanism, you have a body and a mind. You may have a great body and a great mind, but what you call as grace is the lubrication. Without the necessary lubrication, you get stuck at every point. Any number of people like this are there on this planet, intelligent, capable, but at every corner in their life, they get stuck because there is no lubrication. So it is important for a human being to have an element of grace in their lives. Shambhavi Mudra is a process that is like opening a window so that one becomes receptive to grace. Sit comfortably in a cross-legged posture. Keep your spine comfortably erect. We will hold yoga mudra. Make the thumb and the index finger come together at the very tips, forming a circle between them. Let the other three fingers be straight, all the four fingers together without any gap between them. Holding the mudra facing upwards upon your thigh, arms and shoulders should be loose and relaxed. Close your eyes and sit with a slightly upturned face. When you sit with your face slightly upturned, there is a natural focus between your eyebrows. Maintain this natural focus, do not concentrate, just maintain this natural focus between your eyebrows and sit with your face slightly upturned, eyes closed. Maintain this gentle and casual focus between the eyebrows and be conscious of the natural moment of breath. Continue to sit like this for three to six minutes. Yogurto va Bogurto va Sangarato va Sangavina Yasya Brahmani Ramate Chitta Yasya Brahmani Ramate Chitta Nandati Nandati Nandate Va Nandati Nandati Nandate Va Thank you. 
Take your own time, take your own time, slowly, very slowly, open your eyes. We hope you enjoyed the practices today. How to keep up the practice? You could uh, download the app called Sadhguru. So once you download the Sadhguru app, you will be able to find all the practices there and you will be able to customize it according to your day and explore further practices as well. The today's session will also be available on the WFSA site. If you have any questions, you could type it in the chat or uh, you could just send us a mail and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. A happy World Anesthesia Day to all of you. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Bala Venkat, Rosa and WFSA team for making this session happen. Thank you so much.